In the next lightning talk, Ralf Erzinger will do a short presentation about horizontal scalable firewall deployments. Ralf is a meteorologist by trade, but found there is no money in it. He has instead been playing with networks and systems for the last 20 years. Please welcome Ralf. The stage is yours. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Ralf. I'm a network engineer with Booking.com in Amsterdam. I'm going to quickly present an overview of a horizontally scalable, scalable firewall deployment we've been doing for a while now. Um, what's the problem? At one point, most of us had to deploy hardware firewalls to separate two parts of the network for whatever reason. Um, so you take a firewall and place it between the machines that need separation. And because we want some redundancy, we need a second firewall and build a cluster or whatever your vendor of choice calls this arrangement. Uh, note that we've doubled the number of firewalls and the cost, but have not increased the capacity, just the redundancy. If you want more capacity, we go to our vendor of last distrust and buy two bigger firewalls. Um, this makes our sales contact very happy, but this is classic vertical scaling and this does not, well, scale. At one point, we have the biggest firewall and the cost structure of this arrangement is usually also not that great. I do not want bigger firewalls. Sorry, I do not want bigger firewalls. I want more firewalls. And ideally, they all don't have to be the same either. Um, we've looked at this problem a bit and came up with a solution that works for us and might work for you if you're able to live with some limitations. First, the rest of your infrastructure is fine with having their connections reset occasionally. Or put differently, your higher level systems are aware that the network is not reliable, which it is not, and can deal with this. Um, secondly, and thirdly, no NAT, no VPNs. Nobody likes NAT anyway. Fourthly, and this is not a strict requirement, uh, but a massive quality of life improvement is having a system that can automatically manage and deploy your firewall rules, ideally across multiple vendors. Um, so what do we need? We need the firewalls we want to use and two Arista 7280 switches. Maybe this works with other vendors, but Arista is what we've built with. The 7280 specifically because we use some features that are available only on the Jericho chipsets. Yes, they're expensive, but think of all the money you'll save on the actual firewalls. This is what the general arrangement looks like. Um, we have environments to be segregated, segregated at the bottom, some edge layer switches that connect to these environments, a load balancer layer made up of the aforementioned uh, RISA 7280s and our firewalls. Um, between the load balancer switches and the firewalls, we run one VLAN per environment, routing a static or via BGP as required. The load balancer layer has a thing called next hop groups on the, for the firewalls, which are maintained by a special agent. Inbound traffic to the load balancers, load balancer switches from the south is handled by policy routing towards the next hop groups. On the edge layer, environments are segregated uh, as VRFs. The main trick in this is a sort of resilient ECMP. Uh, we want traffic for the same TCP UDP session that comes to the load balancer switches from the south to be sent to the same firewall, independent of which load balancer switch it hits. Uh, so we first tune ECMP on the load balancer switches to only hash on source destination IP and to do so symmetrically. So traffic from A to B gets hashed to the same value as traffic from B to A. In addition, we need a small piece of code on the switch that does magic in the TCAM. This was necessary uh, back when we tested this. It might no longer be required. Talk to this as an engineer. Um, the third part is a small script that populates the next hop groups in a resilient manner. The script gets fed with the next hop groups for, uh, sorry, the next hops for all firewalls per environment and builds a next hop group that is filled with multiple copies of each next hop. Um, if all firewalls are available, this might yield the table on the left with three copies of each next hop. In case of failures, we get the table in the middle or on the right where the failed next hop have, have been replaced by other copies of next hops that are still active. Um, note that the next hops that have not failed have not changed position. So flows that hash to these entries are unaffected by the changes. Uh, only flows that were hashed to the failed firewalls were interrupted, but could reestablish pretty much immediately if desired. Um, and this is really the whole trick. Failed firewalls take up flows over that particular firewall, but not others. There is no failover in the classic cluster sense, um, but we found this to be an acceptable trade-off for getting almost infinite scalability in terms of bandwidth. Um, note that none of this requires the firewalls to be the same. They should have roughly the same capacity because ECMP distributes the flows roughly evenly, but we've run this, uh, this arrangement with Palo Alto, replaced them one by one with Juniper and replaced them back, um, all the while the overall system was running and passing traffic. Again, having a system that can deploy firewall rules across multiple vendors really helps. 
Um, in terms of the system noticing the absence of a firewall or one of the low bonuses switches and changing the routing, this usually takes place in less than two seconds. Um, I'm pretty sure we're out of time at this point. Um, so if you have any questions, please find me in one of the rooms or on ISC, and I'm happy to answer technical questions about this. Thank you, Ralph. I think we are right on time here with your talk. Um, thank you um, for presenting this, and uh, thank you for these um, nice icons and pictures you have presented. It brings memories back with PIX501. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome.